An estimated 71% of the Somali population does not have a reliable access to safe water throughout the year. During the dry season, the boreholes and wells become the unique source of water in some areas. However, few of them are equipped with hand pumps, mainly in towns, and their durability remains a big challenge for organizations working in the water sector and for the communities themselves. Used to equip boreholes and wells in Somalia, the Afridev hand pump is recognized as a pump which is easy to maintain and operate by the communities. The plunger and the foot valves are interchangeable and easy to extract without removing the rising main. These models are made of a lightweight PVCU and are easy to handle. The pump is capable of lifting water from depths of up to approximately 45 metres and the average discharge per stroke is around 0.44 litres. Afridev hand pump, it has a major component that I'm going to describe. There are some components that are inside the hole that you cannot see, others are up here. So first I'll start with the ones that are up here. We have the pump handle. This is the handle that is used to pump water from the borehole. And then we also have the pump head cover. And then we have the pump head that has the spout and the hanger pin inside. And then we have the pedestal. The pedestal is used, basically used to provide elevation so that uh, you can pump the water easily. Inside the pump, the major components are the roads. The roads are so many depending on the depth of the borehole. Each road is two meters in length and they are jointed up to down. Uh, the road is used to connect to the foot valve that is used to allow water to get into the pipes. Then we also have the pipes. The pipes are jointed again up to the depth of the water. The pipes are two meters and they are plastic. The pipe is used to get water up from the, from the well up to the spout where it is, uh, it is fetched. Then down inside the pipe, the pipe we have the cylinder. The cylinder allows water into the pipes. The pipes are sometimes called the rising main. They get water through from, from, the, from down the hole out. And then we also have the, I've talked about the cylinder, we also have the foot valve. The main function of the foot valve is to allow water. It, it acts as like an unreturned valve. It allows water inside the pipes, but cannot allow water back into the, into the bubble. Then we also have the plunger. The plunger uh, is within the cylinder. The plunger is, it moves up and down to allow the foot valve to move. So basically, those are the major components of the hand pump. The main points to consider when sighting a borehole, which is to be installed with an Afridev pump, are it should be constructed at least 30 metres away from pit latrines to avoid contamination from the underground water. The area where the borehole is made should be properly drained. The water from the apron should drain into a soak pit by constructing a drainage channel with 2% gradient on the downward slope. Throughout the water supply process, it is vital to bear in mind 
the important links between health, hygiene education and water. The community should be encouraged to make sure that the water point is clean and free from contamination by putting a fence around the well to protect it from animals or other intruders. Choose a community member to be in charge of cleaning the apron and the area around it every day. Keeping the immediate area around the water point clear so that it's not bushy by slashing and cutting the tall grasses. Keeping the apron dry. Establishing bylaws set by the community in order to instruct the people that come to collect water, such as 1. To use a clean container to fetch water. 2. Not to wash clothes or other utensils in the area of the boreholes. 3. To not litter the area. 4. Only one person at a time is allowed to enter the pump site. 5. Pump gently. 6. Do not keep the hand pump in use for an excessive time over 10 hours per day. The community itself can perform most of the routine maintenance of the hand pump such as every week to check that the flange bolts and nuts are tight, to check that the fulcrum pin nuts and hanger pin nuts are tight, then every month to check if any fasteners or parts in the pump head are missing and if so to replace the parts. If any unusual noise is noticed, check the reason for the same and take corrective actions. Check if the pump stand is shaky during operation. If so, the stand is loose in the foundation and contamination of the well could take place. Take corrective measures to repair the foundations. Check if there is any leakage in the pump. If more than five strokes are required before water comes out from the spout, it means the pump is leaking beyond an acceptable limit. This must be attended to. It may be necessary to replace the bobbin, the foot valve, or to attend to a leaking joint in the rising main. For attending to a defect in the rising main, you may need the help of a skilled mechanic. The hand pump can have various problems that need the attention of a mechanic. The first problem is sometimes you pump and there is no water. Possible cause for that is, one, the roads have disjointed, they have disengaged, or the pipes have disjointed. The water level has gone down and the pump cylinder is hanging so that when you pump, it is not able to get water. So you need to dismantle the pump and check. You can add the rods, you can add the pipes so that it gets inside where the water level has gone down to. Then another problem could be sometimes you are pumping and then it takes time for water to come. You pump a more stroke than usual for water to come. The problem could be the pipe is leaking. Problem number three could be is that the discharge is reduced. The quantity of water is not coming as expected. So the possible problem is that there could be a problem with the components of the cylinder, that is the U-seal. Then what you need to do is to fix, just ensure that the components of the cylinder and the plunger is functioning well. So those are the major problems with the AfriDev hand pump. When major breakdowns occur, a mechanic may need to dissemble the pump and check each part, in which case the following tools would be needed. 1. A spanner for M16 hexagonal bolts and nuts. 2. A fishing tool for retrieving the foot valve. 
procedures to dissemble the above ground components of the pump are as follows. 1. To loosen the pump cover, bolt and remove the cover. 2. To fully loosen the rod hanger pin nuts and the fulcrum pin nuts. Move the pump handle to the lowest position and insert the spanner handle into the rod hanger bush. Four. As soon as the rod hanger is hanging freely, pull out the handle carefully, horizontally. Five. Remove the fulcrum pin and the bearing bush sets from the handle. Six. Remove the hanger pin and the bearing bush sets from the rod hanger. These are the bushes. They can either crack or they can uh, get uh, some abrasion. So after two years, we always encourage the community to ensure that the technician comes to replace the bushes. Seven. Place all small components the fulcrum pin, hanger pin, bearing bushes, etc. inside the pump head cover to prevent them getting dirty. At this point you can start to dismantle the underground components. To do that you must take the following steps. 1. Pull out the top rod with the rod hanger and disconnect the first joint. It is important that the two helpers ensure that they don't let loose the hanger. Two, remove all pump rods one by one until the plunger rod with the plunger and foot valve is released. Make sure that all rods are neatly placed near the pump and are in a clean place. Once we remove it, we also check the centralizer. Is the rubber is uh, cracking or it is worn out? It's something which is observable by the eye, you can be able to see. And if you find that the rubber has cracked, then when you will be reinstalling, we need to replace with a new one. This one is the bobbin. The bobbin gets worn out after a period of two years. So if there is a problem with pumping, this can be a major uh, one of the parts that we need to check and find out if it is worn out and it's not letting water into the, into the pump or it's allowing water to come out and go back into the well. If everything seems okay at that level, you may need to remove the raising main pipe. The AfriDev pump has two options of raising main pipe connections. One, threaded connected pipes, or two, pipes connected using solvent cement. For this last option, you must pull out all the pipes as one unit until you reach the foot valve. In addition to the tools needed for pump repair, the additional resources needed to withdraw the rising main are at least eight people Poles with forked ends for supporting the raising main when pulled out. A cleared area is required next to the well, long enough to accommodate the complete rising main when laid down immediately after withdrawal. You must examine all of the components of the pump, fix the breakdowns and replace damaged parts such as centralizers, bobbins and the sills. After that, you must wash the components with clean water. Once this is done, you can start to reassemble the pump. The procedure to reassemble the pump is as follows. Lower the main pipes back down in the same way that they were removed until the level is reached as was previously. Lower the plunger rod with the plunger and foot valve assembly connected. Keep adding the pump rods 
and join them up until all the rods are in place. Always ensure that the rod centralizers are in position. Once all the rods are in place, push them gently down to the seat of the foot valve, which is then rotated in a clockwise direction to disengage the foot valve again. Insert the rest of all the hanger pins of the head assembly and put all the bearing bushes back into place. Place the foot valve pin and bearing bushes to insert the handle into the pump head. Fix the rod hanger and tighten all the bolts. Test to see if the pump is functioning properly by pumping until the water flows. The number of strokes is calculated by multiplying six times the number of rods. Replace the pump cover. Now your pump is working properly again.